So this year was the 10th anniversary of Game of Thrones, the show that changed pop culture forever, and quite frankly, the show that made channels like this remotely successful. So after taking some time away from Westeros, thinking about it, discussing it with others, and reading comments over the past couple of years from various videos and podcasts, the only conclusion I can draw is that it completely and utterly broke my heart, and I'm still not over it. Not only did the ending and the last two to three seasons overall let many people down, more specifically season eight and the odd choices to abandon character arcs, downplayed the significance of John's heritage to be used as a plot device to separate him and Danny, and of course quickly skipping over the reason the main antagonist, the Night King, was there in the first place. After all, it had been the one thing played up since the prologue in the books and season one episode one of the show, always there lurking in the background to only have him killed with no explanations in one episode. But this is not an essay just to continue bashing Game of Thrones. More specifically, I wanted to explore why it seems we still have this lasting effect on a lot of us at least, especially in my case when you had a pretty successful YouTube channel at the time that was directly tied to it. And on top of all this, we also have HBO planning what will seemingly be an Ice and Fire cinematic universe with all the spinoffs planned, and of course they are banking on GOT's popularity to launch these new shows. The problem is, the terrible ending now overshadows the greatness of the series as a whole. The first four seasons are arguably the best TV ever produced, while the decline and then downfall of the remaining seasons and then the backlash in response to the ending has now forever tarnished what would, at least in my opinion, would have been the greatest TV show of all time. Think about it. We just went through a major pandemic and most of us were stuck inside to some capacity, so how many of you rewatched Game of Thrones? How many of you rewatched Game of Thrones but stopped at season 5 or 6 or even 7? Along with that, the books will likely never be finished. While I do think we'll get the winds of winter in the next few years, I don't think the last massive tome, A Dream of Spring, will ever see the light of day. So there will always be an argument over a potential better ending in the books, but as it was stated many times by George R. R. Martin himself, that he gave Dan and Dave the big story beats and his general ending. In fact, HBO purchased the rights to A Song of Ice and Fire, not some other story with a different ending, if he chose to change things up, which he has also stated on numerous occasions that he would never do because the groundwork, foreshadowing, etc., has all been laid out in the previous books. I don't think Dan and Dave's ending is going to be that different from my ending because of the conversations we, we did have. So why are we all still heartbroken? How do we come to be so invested in fictional characters? I think it comes down to the core of a previous video I did on finding purpose through fantasy. I will link that video in the description below. Game of Thrones, much like local sports teams, gave us all purpose to some degree. In such a divisive world, we could all rally around this one thing and become part of something bigger than ourselves. Sundays were different for Game of Thrones fans. You actually looked forward to Monday for that matter as well, to have those water cooler moments with colleagues at work, to talk about what had just transpired and what it means for next week or next season. The books of course soared to popularity as well in response to the show, some older fans reading for the first time since high school. Even casual show watchers want to know why the silver blonde girl didn't burn or why some stars can see through a wolf's eyes, or why the hound is so damn brutally honest. For that, people turn to the internet and its thousands of online forums, articles, and of course, YouTube videos and live streams. For others like me, we wanted to talk about it so badly and unravel this seemingly endless amount of mystery, we started some of those online destinations. For example, this YouTube channel you're watching right now. Many sought out explanations, discussion about their own theories about what was to come, and to better understand the deep, rich history that gave the story its depth from people who have read the source material many times over. For GOT fans, every Sunday was Super Bowl Sunday, with food, watch parties, or even social destinations such as bars or pubs to watch live, cheer, moan, and shriek with others in the community. From a technical perspective, GOT was the perfect balance in a story. It contains what I consider to be the perfect mixture of characteristics for many genres of entertainment. It borders on a historical documentary, a few things removed, and this could have actually happened. And if you change some names and locations, a lot of it actually did. It had political intrigue, the mystery aspect of a whodunit series, relatable characters with a deep history of internal struggle that we can all identify with in some aspect. With the books in particular, you are literally inside the character's head with their private thoughts with the point of view style they are written in. All that and more with a light sprinkling of magic. So, take all of that, the hype, the camaraderie, the discussions, the old shit moments, live streams, raising money for charity, etc., and not only hope, but expectations for a good ending, whatever that means to you personally, and it's suddenly gone. It's over. Never coming on again. No more Game of Thrones Sundays. No more water cooler discussions. No more live streams. No more of that camaraderie with the other fans in your neighborhood or around the world. For a lot of people, it was just like losing a loved one. 
And if you enjoy the ending, that's okay too. But maybe this will give you some perspective on why so many didn't. For eight seasons, that was in some ways our purpose. For me at least, from a career perspective, it was my purpose. And now, although I have my own debut fantasy novel coming out later this year, that purpose is gone. My channel is dead, my income is gone, my virtual family all went home for the most part and didn't look back, and I can't say I blame them. It's hard to look back and remember all the good times when it felt like the perfect story that we were all to celebrate together got ripped away from us just to subvert expectations. So, what about you? Is your heart still broken? Do you think prequels and spinoffs like House of the Dragon will help mend that broken heart, knowing how it all ends?